Our scripture passage this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 16 through 21. Listen here and receive God's word for us. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Remembering past events and experiences can be grounding. Memories are and can be a source of strength and a resource for survival. As I cared for my mother last year, and many of you know she's living with dementia, every morning she would share stories with me of her childhood growing up in Kentucky while living with her maternal grandparents. She would lovingly share how her grandfather, Papa, would warn everyone that she was not to be bothered. And she would go on to share how her grandmother, Mama, my mother was her favorite uh, because she was her baby. My mother rarely, if ever, shared memories of her life as a young wife and mother. She did not seem to remember that she had children that she loved. She did not seem to remember her grandchildren that she had helped to raise. My mom never talked about her latter years of providing loving and steadfast care for her sister and her mother-in-law, my paternal grandmother. I soon realized that my mother's memories were of a time when life was less demanding and stressful for her, a time when she was cared for, a period of her life where she was happy and protected and loved. The people of Israel, God's chosen people, were once again in captivity. Yet again, they were in a situation where they were under the authority of a foreign government, surrounded by another culture and people who served other gods. In the preceding chapter of Isaiah, God speaks to them. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. God's people are reminded of who they are and how God protected, provided, led, and brought them out of captivity in the past. The God who was with them in Egypt is the same God who was with them while they were in Babylon. The same God who is faithful and can be trusted to show up in their present situation. Even as God reminds them in earlier chapters of the book of Isaiah that it is their very own actions, sinning against God, oppressing others, their empty traditional worship and their inability or refusal to see and hear what God is doing and saying is what precipitated their current situation. We spend a lot of time as worshipers of God doing traditional things, and rightfully so. Our traditions have shaped and formed us. They provide stability and strength. They are familiar, they provide comfort, and they ground us. And those same traditions can also hinder us from growing and living fully into who God is calling us to be in this day. Those same traditions can be off-putting, stuffy, you know, not formative or speak to people with different life experiences or spiritual needs. Commentator, 
commentator and he Hebrew professor Stephen Tool, and Dr. Tool was a professor at PTS, I think he's recently retired, writes, many mainline groups lament their decline in membership and power in spite of methods and strategies to revitalize old established communities the common result falls short of the institutional expectations to bring again to life the established patterns and practices that have shaped religious communities for a number of generations he continues yet these same mainline groups rarely see the vitality of their religious traditions in different social and human locations and embodiments the traditions have not vanished or gone to oblivion. They are incarnate in, are incarnated in communities we rarely recognize as legitimate bearers of our faith and traditions. Dr. Toole continues, recovery groups and social coalitions often embody much of the gospel without doing so explicitly. End of quote. We fail to see the embodiment of our traditions in new and gracious ways. We posit that doing things in a different or new way cannot be of God. We cling to the, our traditions, people, and practices that are familiar, that are comforting, and repetitive, and known. As one of my other seminary professors was prone to share, there is something soothing and assuring about the rhythm of each day the rising and the setting of the sun, birds greeting us with a morning song, the warmth of a gentle breeze, and yet no sunrise or sunset, breeze or morning sun, morning song is ever exactly the same. Dr. Toole continues, congregations have a natural tendency to not see what is new, to not see what God is doing. Our rituals and spatial configurations are so rigid that we rarely discover that faith afresh or renewed. Faith communities become more about stability, about what is familiar, common, and certain, end of quote. And I've stopped by this morning to share that the only things that are certain in this world is that God is with us no matter what and that Jesus is coming again. Those are the only two certain things in this world. God declares to the covenant people, I have brought you through captivity, waters, wilderness experiences, deserts, and dangers seen and unseen. Beloved, remembering God's faithful graciousness extended to us in the past is assurance that God will continue to be faithful and gracious to us in the future. And clinging to memories, romanticizing what was, comparing the past to the present can hinder us from moving into the future that our same faithful God has graciously prepared and is preparing for us. Holding so tightly to the past may hinder us from stepping out on faith. It may hamper our ability to grow and impede us from flourishing and blossoming, blossoming into something new. Distinguished church historian Yaroslav Pelikan says that traditionalism is the dead memory of the living. I'm going to repeat that. Traditionalism is the dead memory of the living. But he says tradition is the living memory of the dead. Tradition is the living memory of the dead. I thank God for living memories, for they enable us to look ahead to things that are to come. And living memories are eschatological, providing continuity while looking for discovering and accepting God's creative fresh and new actions. God's new thing is not dictated by our wants, our traditions, or our histories. God's new thing is not dictated by our way of doing and being. If that were the case, we would not be worshiping here together today. You know, people of different ethnicities and cultures, sexual orientations and identities, people with differing abilities, financial statuses and experiences. God's new thing is not predicated upon our preferences or our desires. 
God's new thing does not conform to our traditions or customs. God's new thing does not account for our dislikes or our indifferences. God's new thing just is. It just is. And it often goes against legalistic strictures, injunctions, prejudices, and biases. As a worshiping community, we are smack dab in the middle of a transition. Let's name the elephant in the room. We are in the process of discerning who God is calling us to be as the body of Christ in this season. And God is preparing a person who will help lead us through this time of transition. A person that God has equipped for such a time as this. And just as the prophet declared that the people of God were to continue to declare God's praise even while they were in captivity, and although we are not in captivity, amen, amen. we are commanded in this season to declare God's praise, to lift up the name of Jesus, and to be guided by Holy Spirit. We are not in a holding pattern, East Liberty Presbyterian Church. We are still called to be the people of God, standing with the oppressed, the disenfranchised, the least, the lost, and the left behind. We are still called to work for justice, righteousness, peace, hope, and love in this world. And we are to do so looking to and boldly and confidently walking towards the future that God has already prepared, whatever it may hold. Just like my mother's mourning memories of her life as a young girl in Kentucky, being nurtured, protected, and loved by her grandparents gave her a sense of security and stability in her years of not really remembering, remembering a lot. Our memories of people and the past do the same. However, we cannot allow those same memory, memories to stifle or hinder us from moving into the future. Our fondness for what was is not diminished when we recognize that that season is over. It's not. And we give God thanks for the past, and then we look to the future. To do anything less would not honor our God who refused to sit in the heavenlies, but instead chose to come and walk among us as the example of unconditional love, as the example of justice and peace, as the example of doing new things, you know, legitimizing women and that paternalistic society and <laughs> accepting people whom others deemed as untouchable and outcast healing the physically and mentally ill, and opening the doors for all of God's people and creation to be included in the body of Christ. So we do not sit idly, reminiscing and bemoaning, being comforted and soothed by what was, while forgetting that God has brought us through in the past, that God has opened so many doors that appeared to be closed. God has opened windows and poured out blessings that we have not had room enough to receive them. God has provided so many ways out of no way. God has protected us from both dangers seen and unseen. People of God, God's thoughts and ways are not our thoughts and ways. They're higher than ours. God can see into the future. We can only see right now. And we do that even blindly, so. So, beloved, we shall open our eyes and ears to see what God is doing and saying and where God is leading us for God is doing a new thing now right now in this moment it springs forth do you perceive it do 
you perceive it? And will you receive it? May it be so. Amen.